Hello, thank you for taking the time to open this video. My name is Germana Robinelli. I am a wellness health consultant with over 30 years in the industry. And if you like what you hear here today, I'm just gonna ask if you're comfortable to consider subscribing, liking and sharing the page or the channel so that other people that are struggling may have perhaps some relief from their own suffering. I'm creating wellness videos with the intention to support people and being, you know, their own, um, their own resource for wellness by using some tools that I have found to be very helpful in my own life. I, you know, came from a very unkind, um, dysfunctional family, which again caused me a lot of uh, struggle, a lot of pain, a lot of dysfunction, a lot of fear a lot of shame in my own life and then I've learned the value of you know checking in if someone's happy why are they happy you know what are they doing that works and then I would try that and see if it worked for me um, and for me what I've really learned is that the more we take time to sort of check in with ourselves and go how do I feel today if I would consider myself what do I actually need today to feel secure to feel safe to create joy in my life and and some of us were taught that we're not allowed to be happy or functional because if we are then somebody else might be upset with us whatever the story is but most of us have these rules that say you must do this in order to be okay and often we abandon ourselves we're still here but we're not really taking care of ourselves so um what i'm going to suggest here if something you know, resonates, yay, and if it does not, that's okay. It might make sense to someone else. So, you know, one of the things one of my teachers taught me years and years ago when I was about 24, he said to me, if you really want to help people, you know, and you want to actually make a difference, you must do your own inner work every day. And I'm like, well, what does that mean? And he says, you need to have a sacred practice to really um, retrain the subconscious mind, which is the part of us that's responsible for our beliefs, our decisions, our emotions, our choices. Everything in our life is, is, is like the elephant inside of us and our conscious mind is like the flea. And so he said, you know, the subconscious mind is designed to produce a result. And if you really want to help people, you need to reprogram your own subconscious mind daily in the morning was what he was suggesting. So he said, you know, light a candle and that represents being in alignment with the, you know, the light within you and the light within the universe that we're all sort of interconnected, have a sacred practice. And I did listen to him because he was one of the happiest people I'd ever met. He was not medicated. He was not depressed. He wasn't using people to make himself feel good. He was someone that actually wanted to make a difference. And he was teaching me how to do the same. He became like a surrogate father to me. And so, you know, fast forward, it's about 20, 30 years different now. I guess it is 32 years difference now. And I still have a meditation practice. I still journal in the morning. Uh, I still make uh, the effort to connect with myself and to learn to slow down and have boundaries. And the world that we live in with our phones and all this stuff happening, it's almost impossible to remain well unless we um, create real clear boundaries about what um, I'm responsible for and to let other people take responsibility for their own storms, for their own emotions, for their own delusions and denial. We can hold space for them and go, hey, you know, if I was that person, how would I like to be treated and consider that and be available and also to say, you know, and how are you going to deal with this instead of I'm going to fix it so you're okay so I can stop being anxious, which is a lot of what happens. And then we're all not breathing and running around and, and being really sick. You know, it's an emotional sickness. So if someone's suffering, to look at them and go, it looks like you're in pain. What do you think you need? And to also say that to ourselves, if we're struggling, what do I need today? You know, and for me, it's so simple. I, I, um, I like to be held. You know, I like to have my face touched. I like, you know, healthy, clean food. I like a little bit of exercise. I love napping. 
and I really love flowers and uh, you know this weekend I got to spend some time with uh, one that I really uh, love and um, I had a hard time asking for what I wanted I got flowers but I did it in a very indirect way which just says how difficult it is to speak up you know um, speaking up means we can be rejected um, speaking up means someone might be mad at us speaking us up means we might get our needs met and we that person may leave us and yet if we don't speak up guess what happens that pain, that anger, that disappointment, that frustration it goes deep inside of us. And then it comes out usually with some type of addictive behavior, some kind of over-functioning, some type of rescuing someone else so we don't have to deal with our own discomfort. It can be overeating. It can be just some sort of a hornet's nest blowing up because we're not checking in to go, hey, you know, what do you want? What do you need? And we all have needs, and sometimes we've been taught that our needs don't matter, which essentially says we don't matter, which means that we can't be healthy. And wellness, in my opinion, is something that we just cultivate in the day that we live in. You know, three things a day for me to allow me to have wellness is to say, you know, this is my time, this is my space. I might clean one area of my house or one room in my house or finish one task. And then I'll let myself enjoy that accomplishment instead of, oh, there's five more things. We'll never be finished. There's always more. And also not to spend a lot of time on Facebook or these digital platforms where people are, you know, grandstanding about how amazing they are or how much pain they're in. And, you know, for me, I look at it and it does suck my energy. And I'm like, why would I waste this little bit of time that I have left in my life having a synthetic relationship on a digital platform people need people we need connection so you know asking can we go for tea can i go for a walk taking time to plan for joy to create joy is super important i work at home i need to get away from my home on the weekends or i get a little bit that shit crazy i need to get away and then I come home and I'm like, I love my house. I love my room. I love my home. I love the people that I share my home with. And if I don't take responsibility for that release, then I become irritable, discontent, unkind. Um, I start to focus on what's missing instead of what is in my life. And one of the most important things is to go, hmm, you know, if, if I could look at this life and step into this life, um, what am I proud of? What am I grateful for? How do I show up for me? And many of us don't know how. We're busy trying to look good for other people. And I shared with my partner just a day or two ago about relationships. Most of us have been taught that someone else wins and we lose. So that's called the win-lose relationship. And if you're in a relationship where you let someone win at your expense because you don't speak up, you lose, the relationship loses. So you now have a unhappy unhealthy relationship not just with them but with you and the whole thing just sort of falls apart like sand and then you know another one is you have other people lose so you win the same thing happens you don't have a relationship you don't have connection you don't have intimacy and intimacy is into me I see and also I share me with you without shame without fear healthy relationships and most of us have to learn it because we're repeating what our parents did that's all we know is I win, I help you win. What do you need to feel whole and complete? What is your dream? What is your wish? What nourishes you? And then you share that with the other person. This is what I would like. This is what nourishes me. But we're not attached to it happening. We just give ourselves permission to tell the truth. And I'll tell you what, if you speak up, you're a whole lot more likely to get your needs met than if you just go mute in the corner and pretend that someone's supposed to telepathically know and then you get pissed off and then you turn into a meanie and then you turn that pain on yourself or then do shopping or something to change the story or the narrative which is just a form of addiction uh, learning to say this is what winning looks like for me you know we go out once a week we have a nice meal we get dressed up you know we cuddle we do this we do that is that okay ask is that okay can we do that instead of hinting and pretending and it's hard, like for me, I'm learning to speak up more and more. I'm learning to tell the truth, even if it means that person's upset. 
and I might lose um, the position of being a people pleasing, ass kissing, sap sucking doormat, which I've learned to do. I do it way less now. And I may have said that in a very grotesque way, but a lot of us do that. We don't even know it. But how you can tell is how you feel on the inside. And, you know, for me, wellness is our relationship with ourself and our creator. And, and I believe that that creator lives in us. And some of the books I really love is like the four agreements and the fifth agreement and, and uh, you know, doing some kind of spiritual practice. When people are sick, emotionally, in whatever way that they are, they've lost connection with whatever it is, is love, whatever means love to them. And when we're children, we're taught that food is love, so we eat more food. And that's not loving. We need to nourish ourselves and also go, have you had enough? Right? Checking in. Um, and I, I really kind of take some pleasure in seeing that people are liking these videos and people are watching them. I get joy out of that because it's, it's my contribution, giving back. You know, um, I teach a dance program and I always said, like, I don't do this for money because there's no money in it. And yet I do it as a way of saying thank you to the community that I live in for supporting me as a single mom who was getting off of welfare to have a career as a hypnotherapist, as a trainer and all of that and working independently and eventually buying a house, paying for the house, having a business that was very, very profitable, you know, helping people get their needs met and, and, and then providing, you know, these dance classes to show women and men that no matter who you are at what, stage in your life you're at you can have fun you can be healthy you can be vital you can claim your body today you know that's important we all need someone to say it's possible here's the light here's the torch um, so if you like this video please feel invited to like it share it subscribe if you're inspired and perhaps you know one nugget makes a difference for you one nugget makes a difference for someone else and we can slowly help to bring peace and harmony to a world that is basically um, pretty unkind <laughs> we don't need to be the unkind people we can learn to be kind to ourselves and then share that thank you for your time have a wonderful day